for some reason, all three of them decided to come in and say hello. Sissy. That's the cute little sissy. Boop. Chubby Dan. And their mother. Hey. 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 She's not in the mood. She's kind of mad. Oh, okay. Man, there was like a motley throng outside. I don't even know what that means. What up, motherfuckers? How are we all doing? Y'all doing all right or no? Y'all doing gay or good? Bad or bitchy? Which one are y'all doing? Well, my friends, in the last video, we discussed a new book that we've uncovered. A book called The Candle of Vision. Well, we finished the book. I think, uh... I think it's pretty good getting back to reading three days to finish this. You know, I didn't like go hard though. I think the longest I read was, I don't know, time seems to slip away whenever you read, right? You know what I'm talking about when you read. Sometimes you read really fast and you ingest it quick. Another time, I was trying to milk this. I was trying to go slow and take my time. And uh, holy Christmas Kringle, man. Very, very good. We have to kind of dip our toe into this guy's world, W.B. Yeats. We got the Celtic Twilight, Fairy and Folklore. We're just gonna kind of jump into that a little bit. Now, one of the reasonings why, so here's the thing, as I finish the, uh, what did I leave it here? As I finish this book, it became vastly clear to me, this is how I will use, like I will use this book and Levision as kind of a template for Eris and his story. Candle of Vision, I recommend anyone to read it when it comes to understanding what the other world might be. Now, fucking amazing. There are there is times as when I was reading this, I was like, I really think I should like copy some elements and put it into the book because it's perfect. It's literally perfect. The way that I would ever describe the Forgotten King or the other world, Aeon and all that stuff, it was amazing. Now, it's a basically a man writing poetry and trying to aid the reader into understanding how to access the other realm and what can be expected there and, and different ways we can do that. Meditation, sleep, this, this and that. But it's just, it's written so well and he really explored the visions that he had. Now, I doubt I will ever have the visions that this man's fucking had. And he claims, like, well, they're nothing compared to, like, the real seers of the world. I am just astonished. Now, it took me a while to kind of realize that I was always looking for first-hand accounts of things. It's, it's always like, when it comes to Celtic stuff, I have all these books over here talking about Celts from history, to their folklore, to um, some of the stories and archaeological evidence of them, musings, uh, etym et etymology, whatever. But it just didn't seem to cut to the source. I was trying to find the human element because, you know, when I'm reading stories of like Celtic folklore or myth or their like their creation stories, there's a missing element, and that's the person telling it. This felt like a missing link. That's why I found this to be extremely important. It felt like a human being sitting down and saying, okay, I'm going to explain to you this shit, not in a way where it's like a textbook or it's like a history book, but in a way where a human being is describing to another one. I found that to be very fascinating. This one, W.B. Yeats, or Yeats, or probably Yeats, I imagine. I'm going to imagine it's much of the same. Now... In that fact, oh man, he was in fact a ceremonial magician and leader in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Oh my god, Hermetic Order. This element here is going to help me explore some of the after realm and this, this, and that because we have a whole fuck of a lot to really explore. The more I'm reading these stories, the more I'm exploring the world of like the Celtic mythology to the Celtic peoples and Scythian and, you know, Greek 
this is kind of my ballpark, you know what I mean? The more I'm starting to unravel, or it's aiding me in the unraveling of the fellow stories, um, the real life equivalents and stuff. It's just been fucking phenomenal. Absolutely astounding. I, I'm like shocked sometimes at some of the stuff I'm stumbling upon. And in that sense, the way that this man kind of helped lay out near the end of the book, the Celtic uh, creation story, cos cosmogony, cosmogony? I don't know if that's a different word. Cosmology, there's no L there, so. Cosmogony, so probably cosmogony. I fucking hate when I do that. Cosmogony. Cosmogony, okay? <clears throat> The astrophysical study of the origin and evolution of the universe. That's what he explained in the end, Celtic story-wise. And man, did it kind of hit in a level that I was very fascinated with. And it really helps me see the world in a different way. And I'm just... Uh, I don't know how to explain it to you, man. I'm just fucking astounded by this shit. This has been a thrilling adventure in the read. And though at times he probably feels like he, maybe he's crazy... He's long dead now, but I think he died in 1918. I read this as if like a kindred spirit. I was like, thank the fucking maker. I'm not crazy. There's more of us out there. It was just kind of, it was one of those things. It reassured me that I'm not a nutter, you know, and I'm not fucking nuts. Hopefully WB Yates will do the same. Very small read. It's, it's like a, a dipping of the toe because he's got a lot of work apparently. So we're just going to jump into this guy's work. See what we can uncover there. Also today, probably it should be the theme of this video, we did some writing. We did a little writing jaunt. Uh, I did about, I don't know, five to six pages maybe? I want to say four or five pages, I don't fucking remember. It felt pretty decent as well in that definition, understanding. I got to this point in the story where it was kind of coinciding with the shit I was reading. So I was kind of like, holy fuck, this is nuts. And in some ways, I wrote it kind of to a point with Eris and his uncovering of what his um, purpose is. Self-begotten at this point, though. So, you know, in the past, in the, fir the first book and a quarter way through the second book, everyone's telling him, this is what you are, this is what you should do, this is what you are, this is what you should do. This is the first time that <clears throat> Eris is like, you know what? Okay, I think I know what I should do. It just it was a it was a big moment for him. And I wanted to be I wanted to be kind of a marking moment because I don't know how it's gonna go myself. Hopefully it goes bad so we can show you some of those elements of when you think you know what you're doing and you actually don't. Hopefully that's what happens. I don't know. But there's a mysterious character around him that's really encouraging him, that's kind of like, I don't know, is he good? Is he bad? It's really hard to say. Is he lying to me? Is he telling the truth? He's the mentor. He's his second book mentor. And I don't really know how to feel about it myself. Even I'm like, I don't know. Is he good or bad? I can't fucking tell. Feels like he's looking at Eris in a way of like he needs to use him too. So I'm pretty sure that maybe there's some fishiness going on there. But other than that, we have Eris set off on his journey. And he's becoming <clears throat> the driver of his own story in the realization of ascension because everyone keeps telling him about the forgotten king well he's trapped forgotten king's trapped and this is and that every culture so far has their own little version of what they think should happen and eris is finding himself caught in the middle of it and he believes he's supposed to save this king he's stuck in some other realm and somehow i gotta go in there and save his ass i don't even know how that works this is kind of the first time that he's realizing that in that it's not necessarily about him saving the forgotten king because maybe the Forgotten King isn't trapped. Maybe he's hiding there. Maybe he's rotting. He's rotting in that realm. Because if, if you got up there and physically talked to him, the king would be there and he'd be like, why are you holding him captive? And he'd be like, I'm not. And if he could just stand up and walk out, I'd let him. So it's kind of confusing here. This is kind of, you know, like I don't know how to feel about that. And not only that, going to this other place may involve the understanding that many others have come to, which is walking into the realm of God through the imagination of God. And it's been something that I've been quietly working on because of some of the stuff I've been learning about, but this really helped in and of itself 
help me realize how one must access this place. And in, in that accessing, there's different levels of, of self and, and this, this, I don't know how to explain it. It's like there's a, there's a body that, it's kind of like what I was saying. It's like this vessel that you need to use to go inside of this place. And, and that vessel very may well be like, like this, an actual book or the book I'm writing. But it could also be a sense of what a religion might take you in that sense. So you're kind of traveling in with a God, if you will, using him as the vessel. From that point, this man helped lay out and reconfirm some things that I was already working on and it just made me feel better. It's like, you know, you, you find a kindred spirit and you're like, well, I have all my shit I'm working on too. And then he kind of lays out what he believes and it, it's like it, it coincides with what you say, just different terminology. For instance, we have, come over this way. He's describing here the earth world, the mid world, heaven world, and God world. Earth world for me is clearly Yuandra. Midworld, I consider this the Astro or the Dream Realm. Not quite sure, like the, my terminology quite of yet. Uh, we have Heaven World, and the, I consider that the other world, the place in which the Fey and all that shit might live, but they also live in the Midworld as well. So we'll kind of get into that more. But the God World, and that is the place of the Titans and Aeon, where they're kind of having this locked battle, if you will, still kind of this mental battle. Beyond that's the realm of creation. You know, we'll go into that a bit more. But that's kind of something that I've been noticing. Like, okay, there's a similarity there. You're not crazy. He's helping you realize this. You just got some terminology to help reach. That's kind of, it just made me feel a lot better. And in the sense of the way he's describing going into this place and, and the power within us and, and some sort of divine being is what we're met with afterward, that kind of becomes the guide. But that also was inside you the whole time. It's just, I find that to be absolutely fascinating and, and that helps me imagine how I'm going to go about those chapters where we're going to see Eris or even Nakam kind of transcend into this other realm. It's going to aid us in that kind of prospect of how we're going to go about it. But not only that, I'm hopefully curious that, because for me it's it's important to find a poet, because poets and people that are like uh, seers, are the ones I want to hear this from the most. I don't want to just read some guy who likes fairy stories and he's like, and here's a bunch of fairy stories that you can read. I want to hear from a man that people think is fucking insane because it's like, how the fuck do you think you know this? That kind of shit where they're talking about, yeah, I, my divinations told me that this, this, and that, like what they consider schizophrenia now. Those are the fucking seers of the world. Those are the sages. Those are the ones I'm looking for. Those people. They're out there. They exist. You're not crazy. I know they call it schizophrenia now. But if you're on the right divine path, you're definitely tapping into something real. You can get caught on lower levels. I've seen men come out of toasters and stuff. But I think in that sense, I'm looking for these kind of sages because they're going to be the ones that help me really figure out how to go into this place, how to give it its justice. Because when I'm writing about the Fey world, in my book, I gotta make sure I do it right. It has to be done right. And as far as I understand it, I've been doing a little bit of research with, um, this is my first time with Yates, but there's a man that I, I've been listening to a lot of named Patrick Harper. You In a couple of my videos I put in the beginning him talking about stuff, that guy, he's been really helpful in it. And I gotta get his book too called uh, The Philosopher's Fire, I think is what it's called. We'll get to that point. But at the end at the end of the day, we're drawing in closer to where we want to go. It's it's been a very fascinating journey, I would have to say, it just all together in this whole process, this whole writing thing. It, you know, just starting with such humble beginnings of wanting to create uh, a fantasy and now it's turned into this like quasi celtic mythology that i'm like trying to unravel at the same time i'm like using my own fucking story to like put shit together sew it together and all that and it's been quite difficult i must say it's not been some easy thing and most days is difficult and sometimes it's like you come to like a roadblock and like it's it's so debilitating because you're just like damn it i don't know what the fuck to do 
like in the book or with lore or just a backstory thing, a high story, it gets to be debilitating when you come to a roadblock on that stuff. When you can't explain something or you can, but then all of a sudden when a new like elements introduced, it kind of unexplains itself. You know, you could sit down and like, okay, this is why this happens and these are the reasons. But here's a new thing. But then what about with this involved? You're like, oh shit, none of this. I don't know. I have no idea how to connect all this to that now. And then it just can set you off on this spiral. And trust me, man, it's happened to me so many fucking times. So many fucking times. Where it's like, all I want to do is understand what the fuck is happening in this book. And the more I get into it, the more I talk about it, the more I work on it with Jacob and Kevin, the more I feel like I just don't know. Where I'm just irritated because I'm like, God fucking damn it, dude. Like, I thought I knew. Like, you know, you sit down and ask me who the Forgotten King is, and I'm like, yeah, here he is. And all of a sudden you're like, well, but if like this is happening, why wouldn't that be this and this that? And I'm like, oh. Fuck. I have no idea. So I gotta sit down in the fucking chamber again and try to come up with how the hell to make all that shit happen. It's tough, man. And it's so weird to say all this because it's just a creation in my head. That's what's crazy about it. It's like, one could say it's just filling in plot holes or fleshing out, you know, your lore. Which, you know, <sighs> which I agree. That's kind of what it is. But it feels like it's not mine when I'm doing it. Well, like I'm in the process of it. It never feels like, yeah, I'm fleshing my lore out. It always feels like, son of a fucking bitch, I gotta do more research and see what the hell's going on here. And see if I can unravel and uncover all the junk that's hiding in the drawers and under rocks and in the forest. I just can't believe it sometimes. It just blows my mind. It's, it's tiring. It really is. It's, it's very mentally draining. And I myself can't quite help but feel immobilized, if you will, by it. I don't know, man. We're getting there slowly, and again, the point from which I am in book two, since I've been rewriting it, since day 22, which I think this is day 27, I think. Look at that. We're kind of right back to where we were, like, lengthwise. I ended up dividing it in half of Eris' story and Nakam's story. But I still haven't even introduced Aya. I haven't even talked about Cypress's part. You know, it's it's so unfinished. It's so in the air. But we're kind of writing it in, um, in our way of... You write it very... Like, you just sit down in front of your whatever you use to write. And you just go. And you're just throwing shit. And you're just seeing what sticks. And you're just unraveling stories and going through it. And, and then... Then you sift out the good from bad, and then you do it again. And then this time you do it on purpose. And then, then you start to go through it, and then you're like, oh, well, this doesn't work exactly. So you keep sifting through it and, and, and moving stuff around, maybe rewriting sections, maybe not, maybe just reworking them. And then all of a sudden you come to a story, and you say, okay, I have a fucking somewhat of a story here. That's when you begin the actual, like, all right, let's rewrite this. And then from that point, you, you get closer to the product that you start to edit. We just did a purge on a first write. I have to take this, read it, and make sure it all fits together, like timeline or like things that were mentioned. Character remembers it in chapter one, but he totally doesn't fucking remember it three chapters later because I wrote that three months later. So I have to make sure all that stuff's good and then, or just plot stuff, make sure it's all the same. Then you gotta go and move all the chapters in the right order. Which character should follow this chapter? Here's a good ending for this character. Let's jump on this one. You do all that, and then you finally have it in order, and then you read it again, and then you fucking seal all the little mistakes, and you do the little hand writ right, like rewrite in the hand, sticky notes. Then from that point, it's like, okay, let's throw that bitch in on the computer. This is like how my way I do it. And I just copy it over with the edits. Then I have it in the computer, and then we can begin the process of rereading it and rechecking it and reforming it and all that shit. And it's a whole ass thing. It really is. It's incredibly difficult, especially if you don't consider yourself a writer sometimes. 
it just kind of feels that way where it's like, am I even, what am I doing? Oh gosh, she's in like, she's going to eat. Cool. Go on. I don't want that. I never dealt with an animal going into heat before. Horrible. Disgusting. I beat him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's just having a time. Then I'll lose another subscriber. Like, I can't handle this shit. Meanwhile, I'm going like, good. Go away. <laughs> anyway, on to the next adventure. We're going to jump into this book and do a reading by myself. And then we're going to write a little bit more maybe today. I'm not sure. I definitely will probably do a reading of this because it's too damn good not to. More people, I mean, I don't fucking, what, I got like five people watching my videos, but those five people should definitely be aware of this fucking book and then they can tell people because they're probably good at communicating, unlike me. So I think you'll, I think you'll really dig that. We'll do a video of that at some point whenever I feel confident enough to read out loud because I'm dyslexic, apparently. <laughs> Not really helpful to have when trying to write, but yeah. Okay.